months ago, I posted um, a phone dump onto Instagram, loads of photos of what I've been up to that week, and a screenshot of the standard model, because um, in the last few months I've been getting really interested in particle physics. It just so happened that Victoria, who is a fan of my music, was following me and uh, saw the photo and reached out because she is um, a PhD student working on one of the projects at CERN. Here we are two months later having been to CERN for an accompanied visit and we thought we would take you with us. I asked people on various different social media platforms to send me questions. Um, unsurprisingly it was a small amount of you um, who are into bright and uh, also particle physics but nonetheless we asked Victoria your questions and here are the results. Enjoy. For us. Okay. After you. Welcome. So CERN is an international collaboration of researchers and scientists and people who are really interested in probing uh, the mysteries of the universe. And it's a really great place because um, it fosters a, a sense of community and it builds international relationships and you meet really interesting people and everybody's just very fascinated about learning more about the universe. This is one of the experiments that's at CERN. It's a general purpose detector, which just means that we're looking for anything and everything that we can uh, find in the collisions of proton-proton collisions. My role as a PhD student, I particularly work on the ATLAS trigger system, which basically is the thing that collects interesting physics events in the detector. Um, I also do a physics analysis, which searches for beyond standard model physics, so like dark matter, and things to explain uh, matter antimatter asymmetry in the universe. Um, particle physics models and theories predict some mixing with the standard model physics, so that's matter and the things that we know about. And I study uh, the relationship between the two in Atlas. There are countless experiments and results that show that there are things that we don't understand, which is why particle physics is such an exciting field to work in. There's a lot of misunderstood, perhaps, or not even um, fully explainable phenomena that we do observe, whether it's at the particle physics level, so like at the LHC or cosmologically. Um, these phenomena are always showing up and it's consistent and we consistently cannot explain any of this phenomena with the standard model or what the current physics framework we have is called QFT. QFT is quantum field theory. It's describing particles that are very, very tiny and also move very, very fast. And there's a lot of things that we can't describe with QFT. We can't describe with the physics that we already know. And so what you're asking about is the physics that we observe that we can't describe is physics that's called beyond the standard model. So it's BSM physics and there's an entire field of BSM searches, which is something that I do, um, both at the LHC and at other um, experiments of all different types, whether they're accelerator experiments or otherwise around the globe that are trying to search for these answers of why we see the things we see that we can't fit into the physics models we have. Okay, so there's a little bit of a misconception there. So the first one is that uh, if, if, if micro black holes, we can call them, were created at the LHC, they'd pretty, be, pretty much be indetectable to us. And if we do have the technology to detect them, that would be leaps and bounds of, of sort of technology that we actually have available to us now. Uh, so it's sort of phenomenologically very improbable that we would see these kind of super tiny black holes. Second of all, um, the likelihood of us creating them in the first place is also very small. There would have to be very specific working conditions in order for these black holes to be created. And thirdly, the misconception about what black holes actually are and what they hold is uh, nothing that's interdimensional at all. They're just sort of these pits of nothingness that just sort of suck in light, basically crushes everything around it. So there's nothing inside black hole. Like literally, if you think of the most nothing nothing, that is what a black hole is. love that question. Um, when does my work become philosophy? It's never not philosophical. The nature of what we're studying is itself questions that have been asked for millennia. Um, it's questions about 
things that I think humans are just innately curious about. We want to know how things work, we want to know how things become the way they are and why we're here, and we want explanations for things. I don't think searching for that answer in any way, shape, or form is never not going to be philosophical. <laughs> That's a really good question. I would say definitely dark matter will be discovered by particle physicists because dark matter itself is a um, particle physics model. Um, so you are going to have some, a lot of theories that are going to explain dark matter. What dark matter is, is up for debate. What model it actually falls into is up to debate, but in, indeed it is a particle physics discovery and it will come one day. We will be able to describe what it is, I promise. <laughs> All new particle physics theories include always what we already know about, which always is going to include standard model physics. So we have an understanding of all the elementary particles that we can observe, at least within ordinary matter. It's really things that are going on that's beyond standard model physics that we can't explain. Whether these particles are smaller or bigger than the particles that exist within a standard model, we're not entirely sure because we haven't discovered them yet. Um, but it is the hope of the LHC to be able to discover these particles. So if dark matter is coupled to the Higgs field, that's a very, uh, that's a very technical question. Uh, it's very theoretical. And I think um, a big thing that would have to happen, there would have to be a lot of things that would fall into place. Like for example, um, dark matter would have to be interacting with standard model physics in some way in order for it to be coupled to the Higgs field, and it would have to be massive in some way as well. I do hold some controversial opinions about, uh, about the fields. The main one is the fact that, um, you know, we're doing a lot of these searches for beyond standard model physics. And I do think they're actually very worthwhile. I think beyond standard model physics is a really important topic um, to explore because we have a lot of things within the standard model well, that exists with outside of the standard model and what we can explain that don't fit into the standard model and cannot be explained by the standard model. But my controversial opinion is that um, beyond standard model physics is actually stuff that we can describe with the standard model or at least with maybe a sort of incomplete picture of the standard model. This has to do with something called the right-handed neutrino and sort of the way that we think about the universe and the paradigm shifts that we need to make in order to really fit what we know about physics today into um, what the big mysteries of the universe are, I think we can still do with the information that we have. Instead, I think there's a lot of searches that are being done to look for beyond standard model physics that is either probably not going to be there or, um, you know, just something that we, if we think about what we know a little bit differently, we would probably be able to find more answers. Watching videos on the dark